Hey, this is Lance. I want to talk about continual learning with agents, in particular showing some examples with deep agents. So Led has a really nice post on this theme of continual learning and token space. And it makes the argument that a big gap between AI agents and humans, as we know, is the ability to learn. Humans continually learn and improve over time. Agents' knowledge is typically fixed and doesn't have the same adaptive capability. Now, there's different ways to teach AI systems to learn. So one is learning via weight updates. And this involves training a model, updating its weights to encapsulate or capture some knowledge. And of course, it is costly and challenging. Now, the nice thing about LLMs is that they, of course, have context, increasingly large context windows, in fact. And this idea of learning in context is a really interesting theme that's been explored quite a bit. So here's a diagram kind of showcasing this learning loop and a few different themes here. So we have an agent. In this case, it's a deep agent. Now, as the agent does things, we capture, in the case of deep agents, those trajectories in Langsmith's traces. And a very interesting theme that's emerged across a lot of different papers, blog posts, is this idea of reflection over trajectories, which can be very easily done using Langsmith and our recent utility called Langsmith Fetch. So you can grab recent trajectories that the deep agent has performed and do reflection over them. And this reflection can have a few different flavors. You can reflect over past trajectories to update memories. So those are like facts or preferences, things you want the agent to learn. You can also reflect over trajectories to actually update the core agent instruction. And a third thing you can do is reflect over these trajectories to learn new skills. And when I talk about skills, I'm talking very specifically about the formulation of skills as defined by Anthropic, which is basically folders that contain a skillmd file, which have some particular instructions and potentially scripts that accompany them that tell the agent how to do different things. Now, these three different categories have been explored quite a bit. So prompt optimization is not a new thing. There's been a huge amount of work on this. We've done a lot on it. I do want to call out the JEPA work, which is quite interesting. And that talks specifically about prompt optimization in language space by reflecting on prior agent trajectories. So it's exactly this principle that we're talking about here. So that's kind of theme one. Theme two is reflecting over trajectories to update memories. We just put a video out on that, showing how to do that with deep agents. And I have a little blog post on my little Claude diary system that does exactly that. So that's theme two. Now theme three is what I actually want to talk about here. And Leda recently put out a nice blog post on this theme of skill learning. And it's really related to the other two. It's simply reflecting over trajectories, but in this case, to learn skills. And I'll show an example of that right now. So the first thing to note is I have an example skill creator skill. And if you look in the deep agents repo, you'll see libs, deep agents CLI, examples, skills, skills creator skill. You can see the mark down here, view file. And this skill is taken directly from the anthropic skill creator, which credited as such. And it's just adapted slightly for deep agents. But it basically explains in general how to create new skills with the deep agent CLI. And so all you need to do is in your terminal, just copy that skill to your deep agent skills directory. And once you've done that, just run deep agent skills list. And you can see that skill creator skill is added to your skills. Now, when you kick off the deep agent CLI, you can specify two environment variables that are interesting. I talked about this in a prior video, but you can specify the deep agents project. This is actually where the deep agent itself will log all its traces, which is very useful for this reflection stuff. And you also can log the lines with project, just the project for any code execution, for example, using the bash tool that the deep agent will perform. So it's nice to separate those out. And this Langsmith project, wherever you name it, will have all your deep agent threads saved. I've done some prior work with my particular deep agent. I make sure that environment variable is set. And I can run Langsmith fetch to grab recent threads from my deep agent and look at them and save them locally if I want. I run this and I can look at what's in that folder. I just saved my most recent thread. There it is. And I can just look at that thread. Nice. And in this particular session, I was talking about this utility called Langsmith Fetch. Now here's an example of a session I had with my deep agent that I want to reflect over and actually capture what I talk about and what's learned into a persistent skill that I can reuse repeatedly. Let me show how to do that. I'll go ahead and start my deep agent. Cool. Now when I start my deep agent, a few things are interesting to note. 
the model will be displayed. So that's great. You'll see that the agent traces are being saved to this length project and any code execution is saved to a different project. So that's great. That's just a nice clarity on the model that's being used as well as where tracing is going. Cool. Now remember that skill creator skill has been automatically loaded. We saw that when we ran deep agent skills. And so I can just say something like this very simply. Read the JSON in the most recent thread directory, which I already pulled down, reflect on it carefully, and use the insights to create a new deep agent skill. Let's try this out. Cool. Reads the file. Great. Perfect. So it's reading the skill creator skill right now. Very nice. Cool. Created to do to make a new skill. This is perfect. Look at this. It's using called shell tool to create a new skill. Very nice. I approve the creation of that folder. It will then go to its to-do list and say, okay, create a skill.md. Very nice. Okay, this is great. So what it did was it reflected over that thread. In the thread I talked about using this particular utility, it reflected over it and says, okay, I'm going to capture those insights into a persistent skill that is saved locally and can be loaded into any future deep agent session. It creates a skill.md file. You can see that is all done here. Very nice. And explains the utility, how it works. It gives the YAML front matter, which will automatically be loaded into context anytime you can start a deep agent. And I approve that. I say, I like that. Very nice. It wrote the skill and D file. It will validate it. So this is another nice thing. That skill creator skill actually has a validation script that'll test to ensure that the skill.md file is, val is formatted correctly. Very nice. And again, credit to Anthropic because they created that general purpose skill creator skill. I'm just reusing it. And I approve its final validation and it appears that the task is done. So it's apparently created a new skill for me. Now let's test that by start stopping deep agents and rerun deep agent skills list. And we can see our new length with fetch skill is here. Amazing. So it's created, it's saved, and now I can repeatedly use this particular utility very easily within my deep agent sessions without having to re-specify what this thing is, how it works. It's now encapsulated as a skill as a persistent standard operating procedure for grabbing Langsmith traces. This is a great example of skill learning. It's very easily doable with Langsmith CLI. And just to kind of wrap up here, it just it's a third leg of this continual learning loop that's very much emerging. It's very early, but it's very interesting to think about ways that these agents can reflect over their past trajectories to learn things be it facts, memories, be it skills, or even be it improving their own instructions via prompt optimizations. This is kind of a, a general framing of the way you can think about continual learning in token space, and hopefully this is a useful quick overview. Thanks.